record on this computer. That's what it says. So that's what we're doing. And I want to welcome back the Massachusetts uh, Senate Minority Leader, Mr. Bruce Tarr. And Senator Tarr, welcome back. Thank you. It's good to be back, Rick. Always good to talk to you. I don't know if the last time we talked, I had a chance to properly wish you a happy new year, but I want to do that right now and say how much I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you from time. Well, I, I appreciate it in turn and happy new year to you. Uh, we did talk, I believe, on January 6th or 7th, yes. uh, which was not a great day. And I, I know that a lot of people were wishing 2020 were in the rearview mirror. And I saw, I saw a cartoon the other day that said, okay, so much for 2021, I'm looking for 2022 now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to get better. I, I know that for a fact. I haven't, I haven't given up on 2021 yet, but I'm disappointed at the way it started, for sure. I hear you. Well, Senator, some big stuff coming up uh, in the legislature this week, uh, very soon. Yeah. The, the, um, as the legislature entered its closing days, uh, and, and in fact, right up until about 4 a.m. on the last day of our legislative session before being sworn in the following day, um, there were some major bills that were passed. Uh, and they included uh, the climate change bill and an economic development bill and a transportation bond bill. And the time for the governor to act on those measures that we put on his desk is coming to a close. And so we're expecting that today we may see his action on those bills, Rick. And I think that's particularly important. Um, a lot of folks have been uh, following the climate change bill. Um, I have some provisions in that bill that I feel particularly strongly about and they relate to carbon sequestration and taking carbon emissions out of the atmosphere. Um, we've all been working on reducing those emissions. Carbon sequestration is a way to actually remove what's there from the atmosphere and sequester it in our natural resources like marshlands and forests. So there are a lot of pieces to that bill um, and I expect the governor will probably do something with it today. Um, and then when it comes to the economic development bill, I mean, that sort of speaks for itself. Um, money in that bill that's very important for our businesses who are struggling to survive. Um, and also infrastructure improvements. And so uh, in the economic development bill, for instance, um, I put uh, $200,000 of bond money in uh, for tourism development to be able to do signage and pedestrian accommodations for the Cape Ann communities. Um, and Representative Ferranti and I worked together, but she really led the way on uh, funding for a, a fund to uh, create a pier and wharf redevelopment fund so that we could rebuild some of the, the wharves and piers in Gloucester Harbor and also uh, some money for um, research at the UMass Marine Station up in Bayview, uh, almost in Lanesville. I guess it's right on the border. Um, so there's important things there. And then in the transportation bond bill, again, money for infrastructure improvements. Um, and I inserted some money uh, into that bill, uh, again, for uh, pedestrian accommodation and sidewalks um, on Cape Ann. It's important to remember though, Rick, and this is a, a subtlety, but it's an important one, that when we talk about bond bills, they do not directly appropriate money. They authorize it to be spent. And so the governor still has to choose to spend that money and to borrow money through bonding for these projects. So a bond bill is really the first stage of two that have to happen. Mm -hmm. But these are important bills and uh, hopefully uh, we'll see uh, progress on them today. And I think we will. Okay, wow. And, and I know that uh, you guys had, what, what time did you get through the other day? 4 a.m. or something like that? It was a little bit later than that. And I'd, I'd be um, dishonest if I didn't tell you I was disappointed in that. Um, I think that uh, we have an obligation uh, to do things that we uh, need to do on time and in a different way. I'm pleased with the substance of the bills that we passed for the most part. Um, but I think we need to do better in the coming legislative session so that we don't have a log jam that has us in session, you know, past 4 a.m. Um, yeah, I yeah. think there's a better way to do business. And well, the, the, student, the student has long become the master, and I've heard you say that consistently about doing things the right way. So uh, I appreciate your efforts in that as a constituent. What about a COVID update, update Senator? What's happening uh, at the state level? Well, so it's discouraging, Rick, to see the surge in numbers that we've seen in terms of uh, average daily new cases and deaths. And I think as bad as those two things are, the most serious thing that we're facing is hospital capacity. Um, we're seeing a lot more hospitalization, a lot more um, inpatient care in intensive care units. And that's something that's concerning to all of us. 
Um, so the field hospital in Central Mass in Worcester has been stood up again. Um, we have not seen uh, other field hospitals quite yet, uh, but that makes it even more important for us to be able to do what it takes to control the virus. And of course, as, as you and I have talked about from time to time, uh, the vaccine is, is rolling out, people are starting to get it. And that is very important at pushing back against this deadly virus. But we still have to do important things like social distancing and wearing a mask. And Rick, one of the things that we've been getting a lot of calls and, and contacts about through email in our office is the prioritization schedule uh, for a vaccination. And so for instance, we had heard from a lot of folks about uh, reprioritizing uh, seniors, uh, particularly those uh, over the age of 70 or 75. And so a number of us sent a letter about that to the administration and that policy did uh, get subjected to some rethinking. And I think you might've seen that in the news today that uh, seniors are moving up on the prioritization scale. And the main thing I would want people to know is this is a very fluid situation. And if you go to mass.gov, there is a place to offer your thoughts about who should be prioritized and why. And so it's continuing to be a work in progress. And that's the most important thing that I would wanna relay um, to the people who are watching us. But with that, I do think it's important that we're starting to see the vaccine actually get out there to people who need it. I heard a doctor on NPR today, Senator, and this will be the last thing I mentioned, um, that um, the vaccine is all well and good, but it's not the silver bullet until this thing begins to subside on our own. In other words, uh, she was saying COVID fatigue or not, you've got to wear that mask and you've got to keep social distancing. And uh, in, in that regard, the governor also has extended these uh, current restrictions for the next two weeks at least. Yes. Yeah, I, I think it's important, Rick, to, to understand, and, and I think you do, that this is not an either or. We, we need to do everything within our power to stop the transmission of COVID-19. And we all long for that day when the vaccine will be fully deployed and we'll develop herd immunity in the community and we will be able to take a deep breath and, and relax some of these things. But that time is not now. And if we're gonna to get to that time, we have to redouble our efforts and, and fight the fatigue that we're all feeling from having to do these things uh, because we're on the cusp here of seeing a turn in the situation, but we won't get there unless we all do our part. And I know that you're pressed for time. Thank you. Thank you very much again, Senator. Thanks, Rick. Look forward to talking with you again soon.